Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a A-level question from paper 4, May June 2024, variant 42, question 2. The question states that Sauraj owns a factory which makes two products, product A and product B. He uses activity-based costing ABC. The following information is available. Annual production is 400 units of product A and 500 units of product B. Budgeted per unit information includes product A and product B. The total direct materials for product A is $80 and for product B is $66. Direct labor is 3 hours at the rate of $11 per hour and 6 hours at the rate of $13 per hour. Machine hours are 3 for product A and 6 for product B. Next, we have budgeted annual production overheads which are all fixed and consist of uh, the quality inspection which is $8,960. They are 210 inspection for product A and 350 for product B. Order processing 12,800. They are 1,200 orders for product A and 200 for product B. Depreciation is 8,820. Machinery used has a carrying value of $54,000 for product A and $72,000 for product B. Other overheads $18,000. These are apportioned on the basis of units produced. Then we have selling price for each product is calculated using markup of 100% on the production cost. In the a bit of the question, we are asked to state why the cost drivers are used in application of activity based costing ABC. You see, when we talk about the cost drivers, here we have cost drivers like quality inspection, order processing and depreciation. All this relates to cost and we can effectively allocate this into different indirect costs when we use this as cost drivers. Moreover, cost drivers help us or assist us in allocating, apportionating or dividing the overheads between various activities like here we have product A and product B. In the bit of the question, we are asked to calculate the selling price of one unit of each product that is product A and product B. We have to find the selling price for one unit. So, we will start with the working notes. The direct material cost per unit was already given. We will start with the direct labor cost. For product A, it was given that we require three labors and the rate per hour is $11. So, three times 11 will be $33. For product B, we require six labor hours and the rate per hour is $13. So, six times 13 will be $78. Then the overheads which will be our cost drivers, we are going to allocate them. Here we have quality inspection, order processing and depreciation. So for ABC accounting, we have a formula that is cost driver rate will be equal to the cost pool value divided by the number of use of the cost drivers. So we'll start with the quality inspection and we'll find the rate per quality inspection which will be the cost pool value. Here it is given as $8,960 divided by the number of use of the cost driver for Product A, we require 210 quality inspection and for product B, we require 350 quality inspection. So, together it will be 560 quality inspection. So, 8,960 divided by 560, we get the value as $16 per quality inspection. Now, for product A, we require 210 quality inspection. So, 210 times 16 will be $3,360 which will be the amount apportioned to product A for quality inspection or we can apportion them by using the ratio as we are doing in the working notes that is we can simply apportion it in the ratio of 210 is to 360 between product A and product B that is 8960 times 210 which is the number of quality inspection for product A divided by the total that is 210 plus 350 which will be 560 we get the same value as 3360 dollars this is the total quality inspection cost for the production of product A. We are producing 400 units and for this the quality inspection cost was $3,360. We will find for one unit how much as we have to find the unit selling price. So the unit cost for the quality inspection will be $3,360 divided by 400 which will be $8.40. Then for product B, in the same way we have already calculated the rate of quality inspection. So we can take 350 which are the number of quality inspection required for product A times 16 which will be 5600 
or we can apportion it in the ratio form that is 8960 times 350 are the total number of inspection required divided by the total which is 560 so it will be 5600 dollars now this is for the total production of uh, product B and we are producing 500 units of product B and the total quality inspection cost will be 5600 for one unit how much so when we cross multiply this unit cost for quality inspection for product B will be 5600 divided by 500 which will be $11.20 next we have order processing cost and this will be apportioned between product A and product B as 120 is to 200 that is 120 are the orders process for product A and 200 are the orders process for product B. The total order processing cost was given as 12,800. So for product A it will be 12,800 times 120 which is for product A divided by the total that is 120 plus 200 will be 320. We get the order processing cost for product A is 4,800 as total. and we are producing 400 units and for this the order processing cost is 4800 for one unit how much so when we cross multiply this it will be 4800 times 1 divided by 400 so the unit order processing cost for product A is 4800 divided by 400 which will be 12 dollars then in the same way for product B it will be 12800 which is the total times 200 which is for product B divided by the total which is 320 we get the value as $8,000 500 units it is $8,000 for one unit how much so when we cross multiply this it will be 8,000 times 1 divided by 500 so for one unit of product B the order processing cost will be $16 Next we have depreciation and this will be apportioned on the basis of the carrying value of the machinery for product A and product B. The carrying value for the machinery for product A is $54,000 and for product B is $72,000. When we take the zeros out it will be 54 is to 72. So now for product A the depreciation total amount was given as $8,820 times 54 which is we have for product A divided by total that is 54 plus 72 which will be 126. So we get the value of depreciation for the total production of product A as $3,780. Then again this is for 400 units that we have 3,780 for one unit. How much when we cross multiply this this will be 3,780 times 1 divided by 400 which will be nine dollars 45 cents in the same way for product b it is 8820 times 72 divided by the total of 126 it will be 5040 and this is for 500 units of product b that is for 500 units it is 5040 for one unit how much when you cross multiply this it will be 5040 times 1 divided by 500 which will be 10 dollars 8 cents then we have other overheads which are apportioned on the basis of 400 is to 500 between product A and product B. So we have the total other overheads as 18,000 times 400 divided by the total that is 400 plus 500 which will be 900 we get the value as 8,000. This is again for the total production of product A and we are producing 400 units so for the uh, unit cost of other overheads for product A it will be 8000 divided by 400 which will be $20. In the same way for product B it will be 18000 times 500 divided by 900 which will be $10,000 and the unit other cost for product V will be 10000 divided by 500 which will be $20. Now let's calculate the selling price of one unit of product A and product B. The direct material was given as $80 for product A and $60 for product B. The direct labors which was calculated in the working notes for product A it was $33 and for product B it is $78. And the quality inspection cost again this was calculated in the working notes for product A it was $8.40 and for product B it was $11.20. Order processing again this was calculated in the working notes for product A it is 12 and for product B it is 16.
depreciation which was calculated in the working notes for product A it was nine dollars forty five cents and for product B it was ten dollars eight cents. Other overheads which was again calculated in our working notes for product A it was twenty dollars and for product B it was twenty. So now when we total all this up for the product A the cost is one hundred and sixty two dollars eighty five cents and for product B when we total this up it is two hundred and one dollars. 28 cents and we have a markup of 100% on cost so if we take 100% of 162.85 we get the same value as 162.85 so when we add this we get the selling price for product A as 325.70 in the same way for product B it will be $201.28 and 100% as mark up on this will be 201.28 so when we total this up the selling price for product b will be 402 dollars 56 cents furthermore we have additional information which says that swaraj is considering using machine hours rather than the carrying value to allocate the depreciation cost in the bit of the question we are asked to calculate the change in the selling price of one unit of each product if Saraj uses machine hours as a cost driver for depreciation. Now we will start with the working notes. We are going to reallocate the depreciation based on the total machine hours. For product A we require 3 machine hours and we are producing 400 units. So 3 times 400 will be 1200 which will be the hours required for product A. And for product B we are required 6 hours for 1 unit and we are producing 500 units so 6 times 500 will be the 3000 and this will be the total machine hours required for product B. Now the ratio in which we are going to allocate the depreciation will be 1200 is to 3000. So for product A we will start with the total depreciation which was given as 8820 dollars times 1200 which is the machine hours for product A divided by the total that is 1200 plus 3000 which will be 4200. We get the value for product A as 2520 as total depreciation for total production. We are producing 400 units for product A. This is for 400 units and for one unit how much? So the unit cost of depreciation will be 2520 divided by 400 which will be $6.30. In the same way for product B the total depreciation is 8820 times 3000 divided by 4200 we get the value as $6,300 this is for 500 units for one unit how much so the unit cost of depreciation for product B will be 6300 divided by 500 which will be $12.60 now let's start with the solution we have product A and product B. The total machine hours for product A is 1200 and for product B is 3000. Then we start with the previous depreciation cost which was calculated in the bit B of the question as $9.45. Now the new depreciation for product A is $6.30. So the difference that is $9.45 minus $6.30 is $3.15 which is the reduction in the depreciation or the cost saving and the markup as we have 100% here so 100% of $3.15 will be $3.15 so when we add this that is $3.15 plus $3.15 we get the value as $6.30 which is a cost saving and because of this there will be reduction in the selling price of product A by $6.30 now for product B we have the previous uh, depreciation which we have calculated in the bit B of the question as $10.08. Now the new depreciation for product B is $12.60. There is an increase in the cost of depreciation. Hence from $10.08 if we subtract $12.60 we get negative $2.52 which shows the increase in the cost. Now 100% markup will be again $2.52. So when we add this 
that is $2.52 plus $2.52 we get the total as $5.04 again this is negative that means this is an increase in the cost and as the cost have been increased the selling price for product B should also be increased by $5.04. In the debate of the question, we are asked to explain the relationship between the choice of the cost driver and the profit. You see, when we have changed the cost driver, that is for depreciation, we have changed the cost drivers from carrying value to the total machine hours, and hence we have also calculated the depreciation based on both the different cost drivers. When we have seen this, the total cost that was 8,820 have not been changed. This will remain same. Only the ratio in which this cost is apportioned will be changed. However, if we fo follow the percentage markup as we have followed in this question, that is we have 100% markup, the profit will be affected because for product A, the markup was $3.15 and for product B, the markup was $2.52 so this is different hence the profit will also differ if we take the percentage markup but if we take a fixed markup there will be no change in the profit as well next we have additional information which states that in recent months the actual results have been unfavorable in comparison with the budgeted figures on one occasion the manufacturer of product A have been stopped and sales lost because the sole supplier of some of the components of that product have been unable to fulfill Swaraj's order. Swaraj is considering manufacturing this components in his own factory instead of buying them in. He estimates the total direct cost of product A would fall to $30 per unit and that the labor requirement for the product A would increase to 5 hours per unit with the wage rate unchanged. The budgeted depreciation cost would increase by $8,000 per annum. Swaraj is unclear whether the overheads other than depreciation would be affected. In the EBIT of the question, we are asked to advise Swaraj whether or not he should manufacture these components for product A in his own factory and we have to justify our answer. Now let's understand the information given by doing the workings in our working notes. You see the direct material cost previously it was given as $80. Now in the additional information it is given as $30. So 80 minus 30 will be a decrease of $50 if he manufactures the component in his own factory. Furthermore, there will be change in the direct labor cost. Previously, to produce one unit of product A, we required three hours. Now, as he is manufacturing the components as well in the factory, he will require five labor hours. So, there is an increase of two labor hours and the wage rate was $11. Two times 11 will be $22 and this will be the increase in the direct labor cost per unit if he manufactures the component in his own factory. Now we'll see what are the various benefits he get if he manufactures the component in his own factory. There will be a decrease in the total cost which we will show with the workings. You see he is producing 400 units of product A and now the direct material cost will be reduced by $50 and the direct labor cost will be increased per unit by $22. So 50 minus 22 will be $28 and this will be the reduction in the prime cost. So 28 times 400 will be $11,200. And we have increase in depreciation as well. So when we subtract this increase in depreciation from 11,200 we get the value as $3,200. And this will be the total cost reduction in the business if he manufactures the component in his own factory. Furthermore, he will be able to utilize his spare capacity in the factory as well as he will not be dependent on the suppliers. It was given in the information that the components of product 
A was not delivered because of which the manufacturing of product A was stopped and there was loss of sales. This can be overcome if he manufactures the component in his own factory and there is no dependency on the suppliers and there will be no delivery charges required for the components as they are manufactured in his own factory. So this will also help him to improve the quality of the components as they are manufactured in their own factory and he will also have a better reputation for the business why because now it is expanded and the components are manufactured in the business itself so there will be reduction in the cost there will be high quality of components available there will be continuous flow of production of product a so this will overall improve the customer loyalty as well as the reputation of the business and he will also have the cost reduction because of the order processing cost now as he is manufacturing the components in the factory itself so he may require few orders to be processed and hence the overall costs will be reduced however he may face certain disadvantages as it is mentioned that the depreciation will increase by eight thousand dollars hence he may require to buy new machinery for which he may require additional finances furthermore as the labor hours are increased he may require to hire additional workers this additional workers may not be available or if he is able to hire the workers they may require additional trainings and they may not be as expert as the existing workers and this may lead to reduction in the quality of the components hence he may require additional quality inspection which will also increase the cost of the product a and hence decrease the cost savings for product a however as the advantages are more when compared to disadvantages i will advise swaraj that he manufactures the components of product a in his own factory and eliminate the dependency on the suppliers so with this we have completed this question thanks for watching my videos and have a blessed life